What does it take to implement martial law? We are not just going to be waiting for legislation. I've got a pen and I've got a phone. I've got a pen, I've got a pen, and I've got a phone. President Obama has recently issued an executive order on illegal immigration. There are actions I have the legal authority to take as president that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. What does this have to do with martial law? Greetings, my friends. We are living in very sobering times. Right now, we are seeing the stage being set for martial law right here in America. The pieces are being put into place for that radical, fundamental transformation of America that was promised to us by the president. Hi, I'm Luke Aminali, and this is MindShift. Now, before we go and lay out the groundwork as to why we believe this is a likely scenario, let's just go to the videotape and see this prophetic word being given by a prophet regarding 2016 and martial law. Watch now. What has God shown you that will happen in the future? He showed me that if Christians don't start praying, more than they ever have. Even the churches become the house of prayer. This next election, presidential election, election is uh, not going to take place, that it's going to be suspended because evil's going to arise and uh, some disasters are going to happen and some things are going to be put in place and the president's not going to be removed. He's going to stay in. And uh, these things are going to happen and they're going to be very bad if we don't get a hold of God. So you see, my friends, this prophet makes it very clear that unless we pray, martial law is coming to America, and we need to really take this seriously, and we need to pray against it so that it does not happen. Because we're already seeing the abuses by this administration upon America, upon its constitution, upon its laws. We have seen the administration using the IRS against its opponents. We have seen the administration utilize the Justice Department in ways that are just beyond the scope of what he should be doing ethically. But you're saying, well, many presidents have done that, perhaps, but not to this degree where the Constitution is being stepped on every step of the way. For instance, the president cannot create law. Its job is to uphold the law. Laws are passed by Congress. But in the Obamacare situation, this president has changed the Obamacare law at least 24 times. Now, he's not Congress. He doesn't have the authority to do that, but he did it. And what's more, we let him do it. Now, this administration has been known to follow the laws that it likes and not follow the laws that it doesn't like. And at various times, if it doesn't have a law, it will create a law. Watch this. Absolutely right. Incredibly, President Obama actually admits that his executive action changed the law. What you're not paying attention to is the fact that I just took an action to change the law. Now. The president's responsibility is to execute the laws, to uphold the laws of the land. Unfortunately, if he doesn't like the law, he executes it all right. He kills it, and he creates his own laws. I just took an action to change the law. I just took an action to change the law. I just took an action I just took a to change the law. Now, I want you to understand the real importance of what President Obama has done with regards to Obamnesty. That's the granting of amnesty to illegal aliens, millions of them. The problem here is that he does not have the authority to do so. For months, he has told the American people that he doesn't have the authority. 
Well, you know, he said 22 times previously that he doesn't have the power to legislate on his own on, with regard to immigration. I believe such an indiscriminate approach would be both unwise and unfair. Sometimes when I talk to immigration advocates, you know, they wish I could just bypass Congress and change the law myself. But that's not how democracy works. The problem is, is that, um, you know, I'm the President of the United States. I'm not uh, uh, the Emperor of the United States. Uh, my job is to execute laws that are passed. But the thing is, is history will treat him unkindly on this if he thinks he can become king. And now this past week, suddenly he has the authority. Do you know who has the authority to do things like that? Dictators. Now, did you know that we have already on the books a law that gives the president the authority to arrest without trials any American at any time under the guise of an emergency? Watch this. The president announced a policy change. He said now that it was proper uh, with his, uh, it was proper for him to have the authority to assassinate an American citizen, even if they have not been charged with anything, if he thought it was necessary. So you see, the law is already into place for martial law to come upon this nation. And the president has repeatedly defied uh, the American people and our Constitution by declaring that he doesn't have to wait for Congress to act, that he has a pen, and he can enact laws. You don't understand just how slowly and deceptively this is creeping in on America. You need to be awakened. You need to keep your eyes open because these things are happening to us right here and now. And here's a likely scenario. 2016 comes along. There may be a national emergency, whether real or false flagged. And suddenly the president comes up and he says, you know what? In order to preserve the Constitution, in order to preserve this nation, we need to impose martial law on this nation and suspend the elections because of the crisis that we are facing. And with the stroke of a pen, it can happen. But you've got to pray against this, folks. I'm telling you, this is a likely scenario. Just so you know, we are living in really critical times. If you, <laughs> we are w witnessing the real, fundamental transformation of America like we've never seen before. We will not recognize this nation in the next few years if these policies are pursued. You need to pray. You need to pray. And if you don't know the Lord, if you don't know Jesus, because by the way, all of these events that are happening are preceding the return of Jesus Christ in this day and age. So if you don't know the Lord, now is a good time to get to know the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask the Lord to come into your heart and to come into your life. Ask the Lord to be Lord of your life and give your life to the Lord. And He will protect you and you will have an eternal inheritance with Him. But we're living in strange times right now, my friends. I wouldn't pass up praying to the Lord for anything right now because we're in crucial times. So look for another mind shift to come. We hope to inform you about the days that we're living in and just how critical they are and how that they are leading to the return of Jesus Christ in this day and age. So until next time, this is Luke.